1420 in the morning for this January the 14th, 2023. Brought to you by SeatGeek and SeatGeek.com and the SeatGeek app. Use promo code 1420POD and save yourself 20 bucks on your first purchase at SeatGeek.com today. Uh, big week here at 1420 World Headquarters. We had a lot going on. We had the uh, we had Bobby Stewart joining me for the Flailing Tender podcast on uh, Monday it was. Uh, I haven't talked to Bobby in over 20 years, so it was great catching up with him. Had Blaze LeVay on the Hey Blue podcast, the Umpire podcast earlier on this week as well. On Wednesday, I think it was, they all kind of just blend together had a great talk about some uh, baseball Canada stuff some baseball Canada days when he was a player in a world championship Dave and I got up to regular shenanigans as we always do a couple times a week had a lot of laughs on uh, Thursday's episode which got out Friday morning and I had a lot of laughs on that one our usual Monday show is not usually as good, but it was actually a good show this time around. Plus our 1420 in the morning every day, getting those out there for you guys and making us a part of your morning. We put a few few clips together for the week that was at 1420 World Headquarters here. So give it a listen. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get that out there to the masses as well. Let people know about our show. We love putting it out there for you guys. Support our sponsors, Seat Geek, Manscaped, Plate Crate, Collectible Exchange, Bodog, Fans Edge, Lids, whatever else we got out there. We got a whole bunch of sponsors. You guys know all about the drill. Tell people about our show. Let's spread it to the masses. See where this 1420 uh, thing can go. It's been a lot of fun getting these things out to you guys. Uh, just make sure you guys uh, keep listening and we'll keep putting them out there for you guys. Anyways, here's some best of clips for the week. And thank you very much for supporting the show. And we'll talk to you guys again on Monday morning. Today, uh, today I'm joined by a graduate of Murray College, Notre Dame in 1992. NCAA champion with the Maine Black Bears in 1999, professional hockey player with stops in the American League, International League, East Coast League, West Coast League, United Hockey League. I don't think he left anything out. But most importantly, the guy who single-handedly pushed my goals against average to heights that I never thought were possible when I played in the AJHL. Friend of mine, co-graduate Notre Dame from 92, the pride of Fort McMurray, Alberta, number nine, Bobby Stewart. How's that for an intro, Bobby? Buddy, I never thought you'd be that nice to me. That's amazing. <laughs> I wish you were half that nice to me when we played against you, each other in the AJ. I was well, nice to you. Rads, they tell you that uh, you bug the ones you love, right? So I just would focus that much harder when you came into Fort Mac, right? Yeah, you guys had some power teams. on You, had, you were lighting me up on a nightly basis. Old uh, Red Light Red Linsky lighting my, uh, the back of my neck had a sunburn on it. There's no doubt about that playing at the old, uh, the old barn in McMurray. I think you guys had great. I think you guys had better teams than you showed. I just think you had a lot of weird uh, coach dynamics behind the the few years you guys were there. There was there were some different things. Bobby, how you been the last twenty seven years since we saw each other last? Buddy, it's been uh, it's been good. It's been it's been good. You know, I'm um, family life now and taking kids to the rink and um, you know I had my daughter out at eight, eight 30 this morning. Uh, and Terry Ruskowski was out there running and coaching her. So Jeez, like, there's a name. For yeah. The, the world comes, that. yeah. The world comes full circle sometimes. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been a, it's been good. Right. Uh, I think like all of us, every year is a new year and a new challenge and it's been fun. Yeah. Right on. Uh, age of 30, uh, Clay Kingsbury. I would have, I would have fired him a while ago, but it, it it shows you a firing like Kingsbury. Well, both these, let's just deal with them both. A firing like Kingsbury shows you how short-sighted management ownership, I don't know who the fuck, because uh, Arizona fired their GM as well today. Yeah. Those, Kingsbury and the GM decided to let a two-bit quarterback hold them hostage and sign him to... 200 million whatever guaranteed and then less than one year ago like eight months ago and now those two are fired so you're sitting you're, you're telling me that these guys made bad decisions and now you're hooked you're you're you got the boat anchor that is uh kyler murray well what's even more interesting about that one dave is that uh kyler murray's now ownership is 100 percent behind him because it was reported uh, later on uh, this afternoon early evening tonight that uh, Kyler Murray is going to be uh, assisting with the hiring process of the, the next coach of the Arizona Cardinals, which is uh, odd to me considering uh, it's it's uh, it's World of Warcraft season for him. So I don't know how he's going to have time to do it. Well, maybe he can zoom in while while they're playing, and you know, which which blows me away because Kingsbury was his guy, and Kingsbury is the one that went to bat for him. A to trade. Uh, released drew rosen or i think that was his name 
Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, something like that. Um, who's out of the league? So obviously they they fucked that pick up. And then Kingsbury wants Kyler Murray, and then he wants to re-sign Kyler Murray to this big money, and now he's gone. So, you know, I'm glad I'm not a Cardinal fan. Put it that way. I actually don't know anybody who is. Lindor in their back pocket, so they'll be fine at shortstop. Uh, I don't know what the plan was for for Korea. Maybe he's going to play third base, what was the initial plan, but it never got to that point. But the Mets, listen to this one. Mark my words. Here's what I think is going to happen with the Mets. Because Cohen wants to win, and wants to win soon. He said within five years, he'll own that team. But here's what I think is going to happen with the Mets. Write this down. Go to Bodog or Bet US and put down money. Here's what I think is going to happen with the Mets. The second that the Anaheim Angels, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, or whatever they're called this week, the second that they are not a contender, which is pretty much right about now, uh, the second that that deal is done and they're they're not making the playoffs once again, and Mike Trout goes on the IL once again, and Otani's having another great year once again because he's the most he's the most valuable player, outstanding player, whatever you want to call it, ever, year in year out. The second the Twins are out on or the, uh, the, the I'm starting to mumble here the second the angels are out of a playoff contention Otani's going to the Mets because they they won't be afraid to get a, a trade and sign deal done and give him 50 million bucks a year because that's what he's going to he's going, going to command they won't be afraid to do that so the second that deal is the second they're, they're out, out of play, playoff contention Otani's going to the Mets then the second next season is over Manny Machado opts out of his contract with the San Diego Padres and their glorious brown pinstripe uniforms, and he also signs with the Mets. They're going to do it on the same kind of a day that they'll, they'll make the big signing deal. They're, they're going to give Machado about $40 million bucks. Then they're going to give Otani $50 million bucks. They're going to have one day where they're going to give $90 million bucks per year to two guys. Mark my words, that's what's going to happen with the Mets. And in 2024, the New York Metropolitans are going to win the World Series. Mark it down on your calendar right now. Go to bodog.com and make that bet right now that in 2024, you are going to have Shoei Otani and Manny Machado on the Mets to win the World Series. I'm I, I, I'm guaranteeing you that will happen. And that is a Brent original. It's a 1420 sports original. Nobody, I didn't look that up anywhere. I didn't get, get any knowledge, any insider tracking. I was just thinking about that today. That is going to happen. Otani finishes next year with the Mets. And then in 2024, they get Machado. And that's what happens. That's my thoughts. I'm sticking to it. Mark it down. That's 1420 in the morning, 1420 at night. And the uh, Foul Tips podcast all brought to you by CollectibleExchange.com. Be, be sure to go to CollectibleExchange.com. Use promo code 1420CX and save yourself 10% at checkout for all your sports memorabilia. We had been down. It's like we got off to a terrible start and and uh, and and um, we kind of just chipped away, chipped away. They actually brought in the, the current baseball Canada president. Jason Dixon was the reliever who came in. Yeah. And uh, kind of held him at bay for, I think, almost, I think five innings scoreless. He threw to give us a chance to kind of chip away at the lead and chip away, chip away. And and uh, Henderson sawed me off twice, to be honest. Actually, my first couple of bats, he got me pretty good. And and I went up in that situation. And I thought, okay, he's not, he's not getting me again. I'm, I literally was looking first pitch fastball, and there it came, and I turned on it, and uh, you know, straight to left field, and uh, yeah, I knew it was gone, and and. Uh, it was a pretty good feeling, but I, I had a few choice words for him as I was around on the bases. That, that, <laughs> I that, love that. That coach uh, let me hear about afterwards, but, um, you know, I, I definitely, uh, there was definitely some excitement, and I probably did not run the bases like I had in any other home run. It was certainly more spring in my step than normal. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Weekend. Like you, you look at a, a kid like Connor Bedard. Who's uh, still with the Regina Pats? The kid who had the uh, the great World Junior uh, for Team Canada, and like we've all we all heard a story ad nauseum the last couple of weeks at the World Junior. But he went back to his junior team in in Regina uh, for what? Regina's not winning a championship this year, and I'm I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here. Uh, I know why he went back. So he loves he loves to play the game. But realistically, what's he going back for? They're not going to win anything. He's he's already. How he's already going to be the number one uh, pick overall in this year's NHL entry draft. He has nothing to play for. Nothing. 
he's, he's other than maybe padding some stats and that that's it. If he got hurt now, that he's the only kid that I could actually see not playing right now because he's the only one with actually something to lose. If he went out and got hurt with some goon took him out in, in Lethbridge when they're here in a couple of weeks or in Medicine Hat or wherever, it, it, he's a kid that has something to actually lose. So that is one that I would understand. Okay, don't play. But he's out there every night. Owners across the Western Hockey League are making money. They're they're selling out their buildings where they normally wouldn't sell out. So I, I get it why he's playing, but he's actually one that I would say, okay, don't play. I, I totally understand it. You see it in, in the uh, in college football all the time where, where if a kid declares the, NHL, uh, the NFL draft and he sits out some meaningless bowl game, I get it. I totally get it. I may, I may not like it if it was my team, but I totally get it why these kids aren't playing. But professional athletes who have the money, they have their contracts and the like, and people are paying good money to go and watch you play, you have an obligation to the fan bases to go and play on a, on a nightly basis. And these owners and coaches have an obligation to get you out onto the field or onto the ice or whatever it may be to make sure that you're playing. And don't do it to save your job or anything else. It's the entertainment business, and they're supposed to be out there and winning. And they're supposed... And fans go to games, as we, we heard on this Scoreboard Attic podcast, that fans go to games to see their team win. They don't go to see their team lose. So these guys need to be out on the field on a nightly basis, making sure that they give their team a chance to win or lose or whatever it may be. Anyways, I, now they're playing in a, at uh, Arizona State University. It, it just seems like a, the kind of a mess that a kid of Bedard's stature I, I could, could just – flex his muscle and say trade the pick cuz I ain't going. I ain't going. And and I have I have we're happy with the NCAA and they're they're figuring out with this name and image likeness thing the the NIL deals. And I don't understand why a player can't do that. Like it it all this player all Connor Bedard has to offer is his skill set. And if he doesn't want to work and we say that like if if you if you don't want to work here, quit. Okay, how about I don't start? No, I'll play for somebody else, not you. Well, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fuck, don't worry about it. I'll sign a Tim Hortons deal. I'll sign a Nike deal. I'll, like, I'm going to sign shit, and you know I'm going to be fine. It's not the good old days where, you know, I'm going to have to go and, and work and, and, and shovel shit for the farmer down the street. These kids have options. He's going to make a million dollars a year before he even looks at it. Well, he's contract. already signed. Like, I seen him on a commercial with uh, Connor McDavid. I think it was for BioSteel, one of those those uh, drink thing lots, something that me and you will never ever indulge in. But uh, or need, yeah, or need, maybe a, yeah, hang one of those a hangover cure. So it maybe. wasn't a hangover cure. Uh, f- that's what we would use it for, but I don't think that uh, <laughs> he would. Uh, I don't. Th- he didn't look like he's uh, got down or gotten into her a little bit just by he looks well, like. Well, he's only pretty- seventeen. Seventeen years old, so he's not allowed. That's junior <laughs> hockey, so whatever. But uh, you just you, you, these guys can make some money on the side, and the thing is with the National Hockey League is that they have a the rookie deals are for I think it's eight seventy five for the first three years. And so for the first three years, he would be stuck at 875. Yes, he would have some deals in Arizona, but not the deals he would get, say, in a place like Chicago, who's having a, a tank for Bedard kind of a season, where the billboards would be there, the extra um, the extra marketing abilities that he would have, and then playing in front of 20,000 people compared to playing in front of five. Uh, there's just more money. It's just, it's just simple math. And, and you think that, the NHL would do something about this and and not have a franchise that is just so inept that nobody wants to even play there. They got guys sitting out now with that Jacob Chikrin guy. Uh, last one, a uh, guy rumored to become the next head coach of the uh, Vancouver Canucks. They haven't even fired uh, Bruce Boudreau yet, but there's already rumors that Rick Tockett is going to be the next head coach of the Canucks, where once again, Vancouver's going to Vancouver. They're, Vancouver's going to Vancouver is the hockey um the hockey thing of Cleveland's going to Cleveland, is it not? Um, not to Cleveland's desperation. Van- Vancouver is looking to jar a little bit more than Cleveland, but I agree with you. They're gonna they're gonna try and cheer. They're trying to fuck things up no matter what. And, uh, yeah, and they'll yeah. tell you why they're awesome. But yeah, you're right. Okay, so Vancouver. So the rumored to be next head coach Rick Tockett, uh, longtime NHLer, tough, tough guy. Uh, I remember him with the Flyers back in the day. So who is better, Rick Tockett or never gonna give you up, Rick Astley? 
Rick Tockett. I didn't care if you said Richard the Third. I didn't care whatever Rick you were going to say. Rick Tockett. And Solid I'm gonna, player. I, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because when I was young, I like reasons. When I was like when he was uh, active with the with Philly, I was in a hockey pool, and like these were the the days when you had to do it by hand and all that kind of shit. Eh? Yeah. So some some poor asshole had to do it all by hand. It was a labor of love. And and uh, penalty minutes were was a stat as well, and uh, so Target was perfect, scored goals, got a lot of assists, and he didn't mind mixing it up. And got penalty minutes. Penalty minutes were like a half a point. You get half a point for a penalty or a quarter point, wherever it was back in the day. Yeah, correct. And then like I was in the running. It was like it was like me and another guy were within like five points of each other, and uh, in in January or February, I don't remember. Talkett got a 12-game suspension for eye-gouging in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> and then I lost and then I lost the season by three points. So, so if, he like over... if he would have played four games out of those 12, he would have got seven. Correct. He would have got two fights, 18 minutes in penalties, and three points. Yeah, you would have won. Yeah, exactly. And then so like like so I'll I always have a love-hate for uh Rick Talkett. And uh I'll I'll look for it. I hope. I hope I still have it. Like, I think I saved it. About three or four years ago, Tockett was up for another coaching job. And he got, uh, and uh, he, I follow him on Twitter and, and he said, didn't get the job or whatever. Oh, and then I go, I got. Uh, oh, Rick. he replied to something on your Twitter account. Yes. He? he replied to me. And, uh, I and remember I, that. Because uh, uh, when he goes, ah, oh, shitty, you didn't get the job. You cost me dough back in the day, and like with that eye gouging thing, and he he replied directly to me saying sorry about that, buddy, and it was something <laughs> like that. So like on that, like on, on like so, I have a personal connection with Rick Tockett. Sorry, Rick Ashley, I will give you up. This one's all Rick Tockett, and it, it's going to be tough to find a better. Oh, Rick. I wish that song would just go away. Like it's just <laughs> fucking just enough. <laughs> The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network.